We want to talk to you about the importance of leveling your planter and the, the best practices to do that. We need to take that planter out in the actual working conditions in the, the, that you're going to plant in in the field. So whether you're in no-till, minimum till, or conventional tillage, that's all going to be different. And what I'm talking about is, is how you're going to set your three-point hitch height or your planter drawbar height if it's a drawn planter to get the planter bar level. So how do we do it? You cannot do it setting still in the field because if you're setting still in the field everything's going to look level as you eyeball across this planter bar frame. So we have to do it in motion. So you need to either get someone to drive your tractor or someone to ride alongside the planter in a pickup truck or a UTV and check this planter bar. We want this 5x7 or 7x7 seven seven bar to be running level or pitched high in the front. So let's look at that a little closer. So we want these parallel arms to be running level. That way, no matter what downforce system we have, whether that's a hydraulic downforce system, a pneumatic system, or a spring system, that will give the optimal row unit travel as that row unit goes through the field and also allows that downforce system to perform correctly. What happens if we have this planter unit running nose down, meaning the planter's not running downhill? One of the things that can happen is this seed tube will be pitched and it actually needs to be running very, very straight. So when this seed tube, if it's running nose down or pitched, it will ca cause seed to be floated about a half inch up in the bottom of the V uh, and the, a half inch up in the bottom of that seed trench. So that's going to cause some depth issues, therefore causing some emergence issues. Next, depending on what planter attachments you have on this row unit, it's going to cause those to run incorrectly. For example, if you have a fixed row cleaner up front or a no-till coulter, what will happen is if that's pitched and nose down, that fixed row cleaner is going to want to plow and move a lot more soil than what you want. The other thing is if you're running a no-till coulter, it is going to allow that no-till coulter to run too deep below your seed opening disc and create a, fa a false bottom trench. Therefore, we have some depth control issues and that relates back to emergence. Coming back on that row unit, we talk about the closing wheels back here and the closing wheel bracket itself. When that row unit is running level, this should be level as well. So if that row unit is pitched down or nose down, what we're going to do is affect how, how our closing wheels, the pitch of that closes the seed trench. And also, it's going to lighten this up back here and therefore you're gonna to struggle to close that seed trench uh, in the field. So these are just some of the highlights of the importance of what we need to do when you're leveling the planter. So we talked about leveling the bar and we're going to transition back onto the row unit itself and we're going to start in the upper part of the row unit and talk about the parallel arms themselves. So the easy way to check this is, is if you've got your planter setting here in the shop, is just walk up behind a row unit and give it a shake and see how much slop you've got in your parallel arms, your bolts and your bushings. And as you can see in this one, we've got quite a bit of wear between the bolts, the bushings, and into the actual arms themselves. And so what's that going to cause is you might think your planter's level in the field and your row units are leveled out, but actually what's happening is as you put that planter in the ground and those double disc openers hit bottom, what's going to happen is, is that row unit itself is actually going to nose downhill again and it's not going to be running level. So we talked about what that will do is change the pitch and the angle of your seed tube 
and it's not going to be any running level and you're going to float seed up about a half inch up in the bottom of your seed trench and cause some depth and emergence issues. The other thing it's going to do is cause some of your attachments to run too deep. For example, if you're running a maybe a fixed row cleaner on the front uh, or a no-till coulter, it's going to cause that no-till coulter to run too deep and create a false bottom trench. The, if it's a fixed row cleaner, you're going to have trouble with maintaining the depth of that row cleaner and it may want to plow. The other thing that's going to do with that slop and the nosing downhill of that row unit is our closing wheels back here and it's going to lighten the tension up on those closing wheels as well. So it's as easy a fix as then opening that row unit up, uh, take those bolts and bushings and, and arms off and, and take a look at those. And you can see on the row unit itself right here, right next to it, we put new upper arms on and we took a lot of that slop out. So the upper arm that uh, we chose to go with on this particular row unit is actually an aftermarket option, not an OEM John Deere. Um, this arm is made by GBGI. Uh, the uniqueness of this arm is they do a two bushing system. So if you look here on the outer arm itself, you got your standard stamped steel and then you've got a spring bushing uh, here on the inner part of this hole and then you've got your standard bushing which we always have on the inside for that to ride on. So what that arm's going to give us is they're controlling the hardness that the outer spring bushing is a harder steel than the inner bushing is and what that's going to guarantee is over time like this row unit we got that egg shape of that arm and we're having to replace the whole arm. With an arm like this you're not going to get that egg shape because it's only going to be the inner bushing that wears over time. So those are the parallel arms that we chose to go with on this planter that are showing us a lot better uh, wear and tear over time. So I think we're going to continue on with the lower portion of the row unit. Moving to the lower part of the row unit, mainly our gauge wheels and our seat opening discs, there's a lot of things down here that we need to be aware of. One of those is being is how our gauge wheel is positioned up against the seat opening disc. And you can see on here, as I raise this up, and this is how you want to check it, you want to raise that up, up against your depth stop or up, up against your rocker. And then what you want to do is go ahead and pull this back and forth and run your hand along the bottom and see if you got any gap there. And in this case, there is somewhat of a gap. And what, if you have a gap there, you need to be aware of what's going to happen. So as you're going through the field and planting, and you're planting, for example, in dry dirt, and you think you're set maybe, say, an inch and three quarters to two inches deep, and you, you've got furrow moisture down there, but if you've got a gap between the gauge wheel and the seed opening disc, what actually is happening the dry dirt that's stirred up by those seed opening discs is coming alongside the seed opening disc, going right between it and the gauge wheel, and right down in the seed trench. And you're actually planting in dry dirt. So therefore, you're gonna have some emergence issues. So, you know, how do we go ahead and fix that? On most planters, it's as simple as going ahead and adjusting your gauge wheel arm here and moving that uh, tighter up up against the seat opening disc. So Justin, if you want to help me, we'll go ahead and make some adjustments. How's that? Getting close. How's that? There you, there you go. So this is what we want. If there's a little bit of a drag there, that's fine. But as you can see, we can't pull that away from the seat opening disc and there's no gap. We'll kind of give that from this, this side over here and raise it up again. Again, no gap between the gauge wheel and the seat opening disc. So next, after that, we're going to take the gauge wheel off and talk about some of the other wear parts on the row unit. While Justin's doing that, we're going to talk about some of the wear here on the gauge wheel arm itself. And um, 
We talk about row-to-row -row variability on the planter, and we did some research in our field trials, and we took a stock Kinsey planter, and we took a stock John Deere planter, a 16-row uh, John Deere planter, um, and believe it or not, there was uh, up to 30% row-to-row variation top to bottom as far as uh, yield between the rows. So some of the things that are causing that, we talked about the wear on the gauge wheel arm itself. You can see here in this case that we've got wear on the arm where the depth rocker would go up against it and, and for your depth. So that, that's one part of the wear uh, component there. The other thing would actually be in this rocker and the bolt itself on where you actually adjust your depth here with the T-handle. You can see here in this case, this is what we're looking at here. But you can see here that we've got easily up to an eighth inch of wear in between there. So there's an eighth inch of depth variance right off the bat just from that wear. So that's just some of the things you need to be aware of. So that's easily as replacing that with a new shoulder bolt and a new depth rocker as you see here. Everything's good and tight and snug. Gauge wheel arms can actually be flipped or moved depending on the wear if they've ever done that left to right across the planter on the row units themselves. That way you don't need to actually put brand new ones on. So next up, I think we'll go ahead and uh, take the uh, seed disc opener off. As far as the seed disc, is concerned, opener itself is concerned, <clears throat> it depends on your planter, on the, on the starting diameter of a new disc. Uh, for example, a John Deere blade is a 15 inch blade. Uh, to good, measure that, need to measure across. When it gets to 14 and a half inches, that means that blade needs to be replaced. And I know what guys say, they can take these shims out of here and they can shove those blades in tighter and what's going to happen then, you know, they say, well, I can get another year of wear out of them, but they forget that we've got a seed tube in between here and the seed tube protector, and pretty soon they wear that out, and then we've got other issues there besides. So, again, when that blade gets down, for example, on the deer, gets down to 14 and a half inches, it's time to replace that blade. So let's go ahead, Justin, and we'll go ahead and put a new blade on there. And while you're getting that ready, I'll talk a little bit about the seed tube protector. The seed tube protector here is very, very important. So as it wears, it actually protects the seed tube itself from soil coming around it and wearing the side, the side of the seed tube out. So on a new seed tube guard, uh, brand new, uh, they should be around seven eighths of an inch uh, wide. Uh, allowable tolerance, uh, we look to replace them at three quarters of an inch. Um, so the recommendation is normally whenever you are replacing your double disc openers, you're going to be replacing your, your C tube guards um, on standard wear items. So this C tube guard in particular here is uh, three quarters of an inch. So we would be replacing this before, before putting new blades on. So we're going to go ahead and go through the shimming of uh, brand new double disc opener blades. So in this case, I have a 3.5 millimeter uh, wear parts blade. Uh, this particular blade has the hardened um, steel heat treatment. So we're looking to get about 30% more life out of these. So I'm going to go ahead and put this blade on. I'm just going to stick with the standard shims that we had before. I'm going to go through and put the nut on. So on a 3.5 millimeter blade like this, we're looking for about an inch and a half to two inches of touch between the two blades. So you're gonna take your business card or a sheet of paper folded in half. We're gonna slide one card in from one side, 
I'm going to slide another card in from the other until they stop. I'm going to take my tape measure and I'm going to measure the distance. So in this case, in this set, I'm an inch and three quarters. So that's within our inch and a half to two inch tolerance. It's always important to also spin the blades and then check the tolerance in at least three spots. We are an inch and seven eighths there. So I'm going to check it one more spot. right at two inches. So we are within that inch and a half to two inch parameter on installing these three and a half millimeter blades. So after we get that done, then it's time we can put the gauge. Um, of course, check your Keaton seed firmers at that time if they show some wear or that, or you need to put more tension on the Keaton firmer by running the uh, tension screw in some more, depending on what style you have. And that then is a good time to do that while you have the entire lower part of your row unit opened up. So, uh, but that's very, very important what we just covered as far as the gauge wheel and the seed disc openers as far as maintaining good furrow integrity. As we move back off our seed opening discs and back onto our closing wheel assembly back here, you need to check that as well. So as you can see, you can take the spring tension off of your closing wheels, grab a hold of the closing wheel frame itself, and give it a wiggle and a shake and see what you've got back here for slop. So in this case, these closing wheel frames have a lot of play in them. I'd probably recommend opening them up and checking the bushings and the steel casts themselves. There's a lot of repair kits out there that you can either do a weld on, uh, repair of these uh, closing wheel frames. Uh, so if you don't have a lot of wear, another way to check these to make sure they're centered is find yourself an old patch of concrete and lower your planter down so these double disc openers are touching the concrete. And go ahead and pull ahead and scribe yourself a little line in the concrete and then make sure that this closing wheel frame is actually centered in that line and your closing wheels are centered over your seed trench. So if they're not, usually there's eccentric bushings up here that you can adjust side to side to center that closing wheel frame. And that's very, very important as we try and make sure our closing wheels do the best job possible. <music>